It's Monday, July 27th, and the time for your today on the news update. The Social Partnership will meet today with topics of vaccination and pricing at the top of the agenda. Prime Minister Mia Motley spoke about the pending talks at Monday's celebrations to mark the Day of National Significance. Prime Minister Motley maintained that difficult discussions will need to take place as Barbados navigates through uncharted territory. But we also have to have some serious discussions with ourselves because the talk about vaccinations is not about mandatory or otherwise. We have already said that there will be vaccinations or testing. And we go tomorrow to the social partnership to start that discussion. But we also have to recognize, as the Attorney General reminds me, and I have reminded him too as a former lawyer in criminal practice in this country, that regrettably, people are also exposed if they know better and fail to do better. And that is what makes the conversation complex. If not, it would be a straightforward conversation. Because do you have the right to work in close proximity to someone who you know is acutely vulnerable and pass on to them recklessly a virus that is responsible for taking their life? These are complex issues. And more and more, if this government does nothing else, I hope that it creates the spirit of tolerance, the spirit of discussion, and the spirit of wanting to find consensus where possible, but being prepared to lead where not possible. Taxi drivers who are transporting visitors from the island's main ports of entry to various quarantine centers are being warned against breaching the country's COVID-19 protocols. Deputy Director of the COVID-19 Monitoring Unit, Alison Elcock, revealed that the unit has been receiving reports of some operators making stops at businesses prior to the visitors' quarantine drop-off. Any protocol can only be effective if there's compliance with it. And we have received reports of some situations where um, drivers may not necessarily conform to all of the instructions. And one critical area is... Um, when you're transporting quarantine guests, guests who have to quarantine that they go directly from the arrival location, whether that's the seaport or the airport, directly to the quarantine facility. There's a tendency to, in some cases we've re received reports, where persons may stop at the bank or the supermarket or the pharmacy. You know, people just land on in Barbies may, may want to have banks bare and and um, you know whatever beverages etc to, to enjoy themselves when they're in quarantine um, and it is important that those stops not be made and we that's one of the areas that we want to reinforce today that when quarantine guests are being transported that it is a non-stop express trip to their quarantine facility the time will be there after quarantine for them to be able to benefit from all of the experience in Barbados and then there are other systems in place the property managers of the facilities where persons are staying will ensure that they have um, access to those things. So it's not the role of the driver to facilitate those requests. Barbadians appear to have mixed views about whether unvaccinated workers in the private sector should have to pay for their own COVID-19 tests. Following a heated debate on social media over the weekend regarding employees paying for tests to prove their COVID-19 status if they have not taken the vaccine, Barbados today took to the streets to get the public's view. Here is what they had to say. I believe that there is a combination of both. In other words, there are certain workers who should be who should be who should be taking the vaccine, the, uh, the vaccine at certain levels, and then the, the, there's the option for the other levels of people to be able to take regular testing when it is available. When you look at it, if you're working somewhere and you're you're going there seven days a week, I mean it's going to be a big cost. But I guess that's something that the, they're going to look at. Uh, I don't think they should have to pay for it, but it, these are these are questions that really need some deep thought. You know. Depends on how much it's going to cost. If something is going to cost you five dollars a day, if it was a dollar a day, but it has to be subsidized by the company or whatever. It could be a split between the two. 
Uh, but it's something that really needs to be looked at. They might already taken the bill, so they could continue to take the bill. I'm done with that, right? Because even though people may be working, people still have bills to pay. And then with the present COVID that gone down already, people pocket done start leaking already. So the government had the responsibility so they could continue to keep the responsibility. There's regional and international news after this short break. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To news from our regional neighbors now, we head to Castries, where the St. Lucia Labour Party will form the next government. Preliminary figures show the SLP secured the majority of the 17 seats in the country's parliament following Monday's general election, with two independent candidates gaining seats for the first time in the country's history. Prime Minister-elect Philip J. Pierre spoke to Choice TV last night. I'm a leader. I'm a fan of the people of Russia. 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 On the 7th of June, you have said that it wasn't true. And here we are, we have one government. I, I, I intend to be, we intend to be a government for the entire country. A government of inclusion, a government that to listen to people, a government of tolerance, and we hope to take this country out of the, the, the mire of the vision conflict that it has now. Our first priority would be to deal with the education of the and particularly the young people, the youth economy. The youth economy was a, was a flagship of, 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 of our party, and I can assure you, very yeah, shortly, we're going to have to spend on the youth economy because we have to get our young people back on the street, we get our young people to feel included. So it's exciting times, you know, there are challenges, and we got the country's both in the the four, over four billion dollars worth of debts. But most of all, the country is divided. The country is very unsettled. The country is bitter. There, there's been a bitter taste that's been left in, in, in the mouths of all the parties of the country. So we have to solve it. And on the international front, the final missing person from the collapsed condo in Florida has been identified, bringing an end to a month long search and recovery operation. Miami-Dade Mayor Daniela Levine Carver said 98 victims have now been identified and families notified. In the 33 days since first responders from across Miami-Dade, the state, the country, and the world have worked tirelessly to recover victims from the collapse and to bring closure to the families and the loved ones of those we lost. Today, I can report that because of these sustained heroic efforts, the last remaining missing person has now been accounted for and identified and the family notified. 98 victims have now been identified, including 97 victims who were recovered from the collapse and one person who passed away in the hospital. 98 families have been notified. All 97 people for whom we had missing persons reports have been recovered, and a total of 242 people are accounted for. Although we have identified all of the victims that were reported missing, the Miami-Dade Police Department continues the ongoing search and recovery effort on the evidentiary pile. That's news. 
But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.